This video is brought to you by Sailrite. Got a porch swing that is in need of a new top? If so, sewing a replacement outdoor swing top is not as difficult as you may think, especially after watching this video. Most of the outdoor swings that are sold on the market use poor quality fabrics to make the fabric tops, and when left in the sun, they will eventually fade and may even rot in sometimes less than a year. Why not use a superior outdoor fabric from Sailrite and get many long years of life from your outdoor swing? Angela from the Sailrite Loft is going to show you how to make an outdoor swing top canopy. Let's get started. The first step in making a new outdoor swing top is to remove the fabric from the frame. You will typically find that the frame pulls apart within the sleeves of the old cover, allowing it to be removed. After the fabric is removed, take some measurements off the old cover and write them down on paper. Depending on the size of the fabric's width and the awning's overall size, you may be able to incorporate the valance on all four sides from the single main body. We're using a 46 inch wide fabric, so we must add the valance along the long edges. But if we used a 60 inch wide fabric, those two valance panels could be incorporated into the main body. This illustration shows the panels and the sizes that are required for our swing. Since two of the valance panels will need to be sewn to our main body panel, we will need to add a half inch seam allowance to them, making them eight and a half inches. The size of your panels may be different, but the basic principles and construction should be similar. Now we need to just transfer those measurements to our fabric. Here we are measuring out the panels of fabric required and marking the fabric with a soapstone pencil. Then we can cut them out with scissors. Using a hot knife will help prevent the unraveling of the fabric. However, since most of the edges will be hemmed and a binding will be installed along the raw edges of the valance, we have chosen not to use a hot knife. Picking an outdoor fabric is an important step in making a quality swing top canopy. Most of the swing manufacturers use a polyester fabric like Sun and Shade, which are actually intended for occasional outdoor use. For a superior outdoor fabric, you may want to pick from brands like Surlast or Sunbrella upholstery fabrics. These fabrics will last for years, even if left outdoors in harsh weather continuously. You can find hundreds of great outdoor fabrics at sailrite.com. Angela is diligently working to mark the fabric to the correct size, and occasionally she will go back to the old cover to confirm that the size of the panel is correct before cutting. We are using a Surlast fabric, which is actually 60 inches wide, but the fabric piece we are working from is only 46 inches wide, so please don't get confused there. The corner pocket on our old cover measures about 7 inches, so we just need to cut a 7 inch square of fabric and then later we'll fold it in half from corner to corner to create our four triangular corner pockets. Okay, we have all the panels cut to size and are now ready to start constructing our swing cover canopy. On the two short sides of our main body panel, we'll be creating a slit in the valance so we can have a scalloped edge. So here we are marking the fabric in the center and then measuring in 8 inches, the length of our valance. We will do this to both of the short sides. As discussed earlier, our fabric width required us to create valance panels that would need to be sewn onto the main body panel later. But before we can do that, we also want to mark those valances for scalloped edges. So here we've decided to create three scallops on these valance panels. So Angela is folding the valance panels over three times to find the appropriate spot to mark for the future scallops. We will do this to both valances that go on the long sides of our canopy top. We're going to duplicate the depth of the scallop that was on the old cover, so we're going to slit the fabric up to about 6 inches. After that's done for all the scallop slits, we will round the corners with a gradual curve 
for a pleasing look. Next, mark the valance where it will transition to the top of the cover with a straight line. Do that to both short sides. Since we need to sew the valances to the long sides, we will apply seam stick for canvas to the valance along the edge and baste it to the main body panel. This seam stick will hold the valance in place, making it easier to sew. This fabric is a surlast fabric, which does have a right side and a wrong side. So we are basting the valance to the main body panel so the outside surfaces are facing each other. Repeat the process for the second phalanx. Before sewing anything in place, we need to baste the corner pockets in place and also the sleeves. Then once it's all basted, we can begin sewing it all together at the same time. Here we're using the double-sided tape again on those 7-inch squares that we cut out. And we'll fold it in half and baste it to each one of the corners. We are basting this pocket on the underside of the cover. Notice that we will position the corner pocket so it overlays the line we struck down by about a quarter inch. Do this for all four corners. The cover has been folded in half along the long sides and here Angela is marking the center position. She marks this so she knows where to position the sleeves along those edges so they will be centered. Then she can unfold the fabric, bottom side is facing up. Before we base the sleeves to the underside of the canopy, we need to create a single hem on the two short ends. Fold the fabric back about a half inch and then sew it down. Next, apply seam stick or basting tape to one of the long sides of the sleeve and baste them in position on the canopy's underside. They should be right up against the edge where the valance was basted in position. If your valance was included in the main body panel, then it should be up against the line indicating where the edge of the top and the valance starts. Notice that she folded the sleeve in half to find the center. Follow this same procedure for the sleeve on the opposite side. Now all we need to do is sew everything in place that was basted in place. We will start sewing about 7 inches away from one corner, sewing directly on top of the line indicating where the top and the valance edge is located. When we reach the corner, we will bury our needle about a half inch away from the edge of the fabric lift our presser foot, turn the fabric 90 degrees, lower our presser foot, and then continue to sew. Since our balance is being sewn onto the main body panel, we will need the stitch here to be about a half inch away from the raw edge of the fabric. If your balance was included in the main body panel, you will sew directly on top of the line you struck down, indicating where the top meets the balance. We are sewing with a straight stitch, which is set at about 6 millimeters in length. We are using Tenera sewing thread, which is totally UV proof and warranted for the life of the fabric. However, it is pricey. A good second choice, which is more popular, is a V69 or V92 polyester thread, which is UV resistant. We skipped ahead and have now reached our starting position. Now we will apply seam stick to the sleeve's edge and create a single hem while basting it to the underside of the canopy. Notice the valance along the long sides has been splayed out so we do not sew through it when we sew the sleeve in place.
Once it is basted down, sew it securely to the canopy. Do the same with the opposite sleeve. If you would like, you can reinforce the valance edge by stitching very close to the first stitch, thus creating two rows of a straight stitch. That's your choice. To match the scallops at the four corners, we will sew about two inches from the top corner down. So they will have the slit only six inches up from the valance edge, like the other scallops. All that is left is to sew the binding all around the balance's scalloped edges. We will use a prefabricated binding here and a swing away binder from Sarite to sew this binding on the edge. If you do not have a binder attachment, you can pre-fold the binding and position it by hand. Every few inches you would sew and then stop, reposition again, and sew, repeating the process until it is sewn down. However, using a binder is much easier so you may want to consider purchasing one from Sayorite. Here you can see the binder is actually a little bit too close to the presser foot, that's why it's bouncing back and forth. Notice that when Angela comes to a peak where the slit was made for the scallop, she moves the swing binder out of the way and sews that binding on by hand with the sewing machine. Because our binder swings away or out, we can sew binding on an inside turn or curve by hand. Once it's sewn around the inside turn, the binder can then be pushed back into position and used again for straightaways and external curves. This is one of the major advantages to a swing away binder over a stationary binder. We have skipped ahead here and are coming to the beginning part where we started the binding. Here she will trim the excess binding at the start position and then sew over it with the end of the binding. The binder is completely adjustable, so the fact that it is touching the presser foot and bouncing back and forth could easily be resolved by releasing two screws and pushing the binder away from the presser foot. Our swing canopy cover is now complete and ready for the frame to be reinserted and assembled back on the swing. Let's now go over the materials and tools that were used to build this swing canopy top. Two superior fabric brands for an outdoor project like this are Sunbrella Upholstery Fabric or Surlast Fabric. You will find hundreds of outdoor fabric choices at Sayorite. For more free videos like this, be sure to check out the Sayorite website or subscribe to the Sayorite YouTube channel today. It's your loyal patronage to Sayorite that makes these free videos available. Thanks for your loyal support.